This is a tutorial that's going to discuss the very basics of paper space, page setup, and printing or plotting in AutoCAD. As you can see in this drawing, the line work uh, was completed in model space. It was created at a one-to-one -one scale. Uh, I've set up layers for this drawing. Um, there are certain line types. Uh, and in particular, the colors correspond with pin settings uh, that we'll talk about in a separate tutorial. From here, I want to go to the page setup, printing, and exporting of this. This will be a key part because this is drawn at one-to-one, -one, which means that a five-foot sidewalk is five feet in model space. We'll have to scale this, and we'll do that through paper space or our layouts. To access those, simply click um, off of model and onto layout one in this case. Now, most of our default layouts are going to come in as a eight and a half by eleven page and you can see that in this case it is in landscape orientation. You can see what looks like a sheet of paper here. Now the dashed line uh, represents a printer margin so things outside of that won't actually uh, show up whether it's um, when you print to a physical piece of paper or export uh, via a PDF. And the separate piece comes in typically on a new layout and it is the viewport. This, in essence, is the hole in the paper that views into model space and becomes the mechanism by which we can actually scale the drawing. Now, initially what I'm going to do is simply delete this. Uh, we'll talk about a way to create a new viewport in just a second. There are a couple different things that we can do with this tab. We can rename it, uh, which might be helpful if we want to give it a name, whether it's a site plan, existing conditions, grading, uh, some type of name for this particular paper. We can move or copy this, so if you have something set up, say a title block, and you want to copy that to a separate sheet, you can copy it here. But the most important one is going to be Page Setup Manager. This allows us to customize this particular page. Brings up this dialog, we can select any of the existing layouts already. In this case, it already highlights Layout 1, and I'm going to simply click Modify. And this is the Page Setup panel. Uh, some very important components in here that we're going to talk about. First is the Printer Plotter. Now, it usually we'll stick to a default one. You'll see all my different printers in here. I'm going to start with just a DWG to PDF. This way, we'll actually plot this sheet of paper to a PDF. The second piece is paper size, and there's a whole list of papers here. I'd stick with ANSI D, which is a 22 by 34 inch sheet of paper. It works well when you're plotting uh, half scale drawings. They, show up as exactly an 11 by 17 at 50 percent. The next thing is the plot area. We just want to confirm that it's going to plot the layout and that it's going to make that at one to one. We'll handle the scaling through the viewport itself. The plot style table. Now this is going to be custom to uh, your particular firm or company or plot styles that you've created yourself. Um, and if we do none, it will simply print the colors that are showing up in model space. We can also do monochrome, uh, which will print everything in black and white, uh, which is helpful, uh, but not as helpful as having your own CTB file. In our case, we have the MSU LA plot style. I'm going to go ahead and select that one. This is where colors uh, of certain layers and certain lines correspond to a particular line weight. Now, moving down to plot options, I'm going to check on plot transparency. That's something that I'll do occasionally with my layers, and I want to make sure that's enabled for this plot. I'll confirm that the drawing orientation is landscape and hit OK. We'll close this menu. What you might have noticed or might not have noticed is that our paper is actually now reformatted to a 22 by 34. And I actually do a distance command and click roughly on the edge and drag all the way across. You can see that this is uh, 2 feet 10 inches, which obviously equates to 34 inches. If I were to do it vertical, it would be 22. Now there's nothing on this page just yet, so I want to go ahead and create a viewport. And that viewport, again, is the opening in the sheet of paper that's going to allow us to view into model space and see everything that we've drafted in there. To do that, the shortcut is going to be MV, it stands for Model View, and you can just simply click and drag a box. Now there are different ways to cut viewports. You can see on my viewport toolbar up here that this is a single rectangular, a polygonal viewport, which allows me to do one that's more of a custom shape. Some other different options up here, but just by clicking MV, I can create the rectangular viewport. 
Now, if I zoom in and out right now, I'm actually zooming in and out in paper space. But if I click inside, I can zoom in and out of model space. This is where we begin to change the scale. I simply click outside to get outside of uh, model space and back into paper space. Another way is simply to click on the word paper at the bottom, click on the word model as well. You'll find that might be helpful if you get too zoomed in and you can't get back out to paper space. You can simply click on the word model and it takes you back to paper space. Now, how do we set the scale for this? That's a really important piece. We'll double click inside and I typically do this from my viewports panel. It's the reason one of the few panels that I actually keep on my dock up top. And you can see that I have it checked all the way at the bottom. One of the distinct advantages of having the toolbar up top is that by clicking inside you can highlight this text and type in whichever scale you would like. Right here I'll do 1 inch equals 10 feet, zoom back to this area that I'm working on and have it set up at 1 inch equals 10 feet. By clicking outside of the viewport I've locked that in. Now another method for doing this is by using some of the presets, if you don't have your viewport toolbar, you can actually access a lot of these down here. You have to be, important to note is that you have to be actually double clicked inside the viewport to affect that particular viewport. To add custom scales, if you don't see one that fits the type of drawing that you're working on, you can click on the custom dialog and actually generate new scales from there. In some cases, you might want to bring in a title block into your particular uh, layout. In this case, I'm going to copy a title block from another drawing. This could be outside of AutoCAD. I've already copied it into this drawing. But I would simply go to Edit, Copy, and come into this drawing, erase this viewport, and say Edit, Paste. Shortcut would be Control-C and Control-V. Now it's important that we don't confuse this with just using the simple copy command that's in AutoCAD already by, by typing CO space. I won't be able to copy this uh, into the other tab. I can only copy it within this particular tab. So make sure you use Control C and Control V to do that copy. I'll hit MV again to create my viewport. And I double click inside, zoom back into my drawing, and line this up at 1 inch equals 10 feet. I'm going to scale it appropriately. You can reposition it in here by just typing P space for pan. You can also use your middle mouse button pushing down on that to pan as well. From here, I'm ready to fill out my title block and plot this page. Plot is also uh, synonymous with print in AutoCAD. You might see this print icon, which you can hover over. In my case, it says plot, uh, or you can simply type in the word plot. We'll bring up this dialog, which looks eerily similar to the page setup. In fact, all of our settings that are in here are correspond exactly with our page setup manager. So there's not much to do here except press preview to pull this up. We can take a quick look at it, see how our line weights are working. We like how everything is coming together. I can right click and go ahead and click plot from here. In this case, I'll just exit to bring back up the menu and say OK. Once you say OK, it'll ask you, prompt you for where to save this on your computer. You can go ahead and do that and you'll be ready to access that PDF. There are other helpful tools when it comes to plotting, like batch plotting, where you can plot all of your layout tabs at one time and other little nuances that are in there, especially when it comes to the different types of printers that you have and setting those properties. So be sure to check those out as well. And you might have to troubleshoot a few things as you go along, but this should give you a good starting point.